So something happened there, which created temperatures between 800 to 1100 degrees centigrade. Is it a meteorite? Did it land slowly for some reason? It's become a station of knowledge and grace. So if you look at this whole setup, the geographical, geological setup around it, you see what is called as a conglomerate of uh, mass, which is like concrete, which has all pebbles molded into some molten earth. So something happened there, which created temperatures between 800 to 1100 degrees centigrade which melted the soil, but which did not melt the rocks. If a volcano happens, rocks melt because the temperatures go up to 3000 degrees centigrade. If a, a meteorite lands, temperatures hit 4000 to 6000 degrees centigrade, so everything melts. These are the two phenomena we know which generally create that kind of temperature or if uh, the tectonic plates move, which has definitely happened in the area, if they happen, then also temperatures could raise when, because of the friction and things could melt. I really don't have enough scientific information as to what is the kind of temperatures that happen. Some Russian scientist says that uh, this kind of tectonic clash could create that kind of 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade and soil could melt and all this stuff. It's possible. That looks like the most uh, sensible uh, scientific explanation that one can give. So soil melted and the rock did not melt. That's why you see all those mountains like concrete standing up with all pebbles sticking all over the place. All the mountains around when you're walking are like concrete mountains. You can see pebbles and molten soil. But Kailash alone is standing like a steel, like black steel, it's standing there. And last time we sent people right up to the core to get some rocks from the mountain itself. We have them with us, we see that it's energy-wise, it's reverberating in a big way, but we do not know the geological composition of this. Is it a meteorite or is it a certain rising that happened from the earth itself? We do not know that exactly. Geologically, they say it's a certain rising. Why this rising happened, all this, I have not found any uh, logical explanations to this. Why a peak would rise like that, I really do not know. If it's because of tectonic movement, it should have been of one kind. Like you find the Indian Himalayas, it's of one kind, it has peaks, but it's of one kind. Here it seems to be different. There may be a geological explanation, I do not know. But you can see geologically it's of a different structure altogether. Either you can try to read miraculous happenings into this or if there isn't anything like that, it's just a natural earth formation happening that's happened and somehow this peak had more integrity. Obviously it has because of the kind of rock that it is. So Shiva and uh, other yogis chose this place because this was a good place. That could be the most sensible explanation. Or there could be some other crazy happening because there's a crazy lake next door. So there could be some possible craziness out there in its making. Or it could be just a natural geological happening. Both are possible. We need a scientific assessment of this, which we haven't found yet. Story-wise, uh, Shiva is always sitting at the peak of Kailash. With uh, Parvati sitting on his lap, on his left lap. This is all you need to understand this. This is a story which is trying to narrate a certain dimension of life. This is not 
a physical thing that there's a man sitting there and a woman sitting on his lap, that's not the point. How life is made, that's how the story is. The science of life expressed in a story form, a dialectical expression of life. So, he's sitting on this peak constantly, unless he goes to his original kailash sometimes, he goes away, only then he's missing, otherwise he's always sitting there. So Kailash is his original abode. This is his visiting Kailash. It has many aspects to it. We've been promising you that uh, we will find out the nature of this material, what this is and I sent a few pieces with one of the Detroit meditators. They were supposed to find out and uh, I don't know, I think they must be keeping the stones in their house and worshipping it or something. <laughs> they got the nice stones and they must be keeping it in their shrine. I don't know what happened but <laughs> I have not gotten any reports. Somebody else said there's another place in Arizona and they're going to send it there and they took a few more pieces from me and I don't know where they went. <laughs> So, uh, apart from this, the significance of the mountain for us is not its nature, how it happened, however it has happened. Is it a meteorite, meteorite, did it land slowly for some reason and all this kind of stuff. Maybe it's just a natural happening, but for us the significance is what it… right now what it has become a station for. It's become a station of knowledge and grace. That's all that matters to us.